Hello, my name is Ted Sherwood. I'm the Director of the Office of Regulatory Operations within the Office of Generic Drugs. With this presentation, we are going to learn when original application goal dates are extended, remain unchanged, and even when the goal date may be shortened. There will also be a discussion of the imminent actions process outlined in the commitment letter. We will start with a refresher of the first cycle process from GDUFA 2 as it serves as the foundation for the extensions in the GDUFA 3 commitment letter. Then we will work through the first cycle, two subsequent cycles, the facility not ready, and imminent action processes. GDUFA 2 serves as the foundation for many of the extensions that we will be discussing for GDUFA 3. The cycle starts with the original submission. That sets the goal date as outlined in the commitment letter. The goal date sets the midpoint. The submission starts the filing assessment and some high-level application triaging. Often, a filing IR is needed to complete the submission, allowing FDA to acknowledge the application the vast majority of the time. Application acknowledgement starts review assessment phase one. During this phase, quality and bio IR and DRLs will typically be issued. The applicant prepares responses, then submits the response as an amendment to the application. This starts review assessment communication phase two. It should be noted that the facility's assessment is often linked up with the review assessment during this phase to allow FDA to complete its work on the application. The application letter is prepared, endorsed, and issued. In the pre-submission facility correspondence process, the goal date is shortened to eight months because the PFC submission is sent to the FDA not less than 60 days in advance of the application submission. That allows for the facility experts to begin their assessment in advance of the actual application submission and provide the facility information to the review assessment team prior to the eight month goal date. We will not walk through the impact of each extension type on PFCs, but with this understanding of the PFC process, you will be able to see the impact of extensions on the PFC process and timelines. In the typical first cycle original ANDA with all minor issues, the minor IRs and DRLs will be issued around the midpoint. The applicant prepares and submits the response as minor amendments. If the responding amendments are what we expect and minor, there will be no change to the goal date. As tips, please make every effort to provide a thorough response on time. If there are any issues, please contact the appropriate discipline project manager. In the typical first cycle original ANDA with one or more major issues, the major IRs and DRLs will be issued around the midpoint. The applicant prepares and submits the response as a major amendment. New in the GDUFA 3 commitment letter is that if the responding amendment is what FDA expects, there will be an extension to the goal date determined by the type of major amendment submitted. As tips, please make every effort to provide a thorough response on time. If there are any issues, please contact the appropriate discipline project manager. That should sound familiar. In this situation, a late cycle IR or DRL is issued and an appropriate responding minor amendment starts another review assessment communication phase and triggers an extension of 90 days from the date of the amendment submission. Once again, a late cycle IR DRL is issued 
and an appropriate responding minor amendment starts another review assessment communication phase and triggers an extension of 90 days from the date of the amendment submission. Note that due to the mid-cycle major amendment, this goal date had already been extended. If this late cycle minor amendment is adequate, this will be a long first cycle approval, around 16 to 20 months. Now we will address mid-cycle review meetings outlined in the commitment letter. There is no impact on the goal date due to the selection of the standard mid-cycle review meeting. However, the selection of the enhanced mid-cycle review meeting comes with a 60-day extension. The commitment letter also allows for late cycle IR or DRL extensions. As with the first cycle, a late cycle IR or DRL is issued and an appropriate responding minor amendment starts another review assessment communication phase and triggers an extension of 90 days from the date of the amendment submission. Now we will address the facility not ready process outlined in the commitment letter. We will walk through a few scenarios. The GDUFA 2 process again serves as the basis for the facility not ready process. Hopefully this situation will be very rare. You can clearly see a large gap between the filing acknowledgement letter and the beginning of the review assessment. The commitment letter states, if upon initial submission, a standard or priority original ANDA contains a certification that a site listed on the Form 356H is not ready for inspection, meaning the box no is checked in response to is the site ready for inspection in section 28, FDA will set a goal date that is 15 months from the date of submission. FDA will conduct the filing review, but FDA will not immediately commence substantive assessment of the application. If the applicant does not submit an amendment stating the site is ready by 30 days before the 15 month goal date, FDA will reset the goal date for an additional 15 months for a total of 30 months. This also means that the traditional mid-cycle communications will not be occurring until very late in the cycle. During the initial 15 month assessment period, if the applicant submits an amendment with a form FDA 356H that certifies all facilities are ready for inspection, prior to 30 days before the original 15 month goal date, FDA will set a new goal date. In this case, 10 months from the date of the amendment stating that the facilities are ready. In this example, the goal date becomes 19 months as the 10 month extension is triggered from the amendment submitted at month nine. Note that applicants in this situation should expect a lag from the facility ready amendment to the first IRDRL issuance as the commitment letter indicates that FDA will not commence substantive assessment activity until the facilities are ready for inspection. In this case, the amendment that the facilities are ready is received at month three. That amendment allows for the setting of a 10 month goal. Unique to this situation, the goal will be reduced from the original 15 months to 13 months. Again, note that applicants in this situation should expect a lag from the facility ready amendment to the first IRDRL issuance as the commitment letter indicates that FDA will not commence substantial assessment activity until the facilities 
are ready for inspection. Finally, what everyone wants, imminent action. This is basically a renaming of the imminent approval process from GDUFA 2. The process applies to both approvals and tentative approvals. The process, timing, etc. is largely on change from GDUFA 2. Imminent actions are used in a few situations. The first situation is skipping a tentative approval by the goal date to facilitate full approval within 60 days after the goal date. This occurs in cases when FDA completes its work by the goal date and could issue a tentative approval, but a full approval could be issued within 60 days of that goal date. The logic supporting this use of the imminent action process is that issuing the tentative approval might not leave enough time for the applicant to request full approval and for FDA to complete work to issue the approval on the earliest possible date. This is a win for the applicant, FDA, and the patient. Another common situation relates to aligning the application to reach approval or tentative approval by a forfeiture date. And in the case captured on this slide, to bring an application to approval or tentative approval within the current cycle, most frequently, this process is invoked to finish the labeling just after the other disciplines reach adequate. However, it is not limited to labeling as quality and bio also use this imminent action process. Note, this is not limited to the first cycle. In the typical situation, a late cycle IRDRL is issued by FDA with a request for a responding amendment to be sent from the applicant a little ahead of the GDUFA goal date so that FDA has time to conduct a triage of the amendment to determine if it looks good. If not, FDA will try to quickly convert that to a complete response letter within the terms of a commitment letter. However, FDA is hopeful that most of the time the responding amendment is satisfactory and FDA can issue an imminent action within 60 days to bring that discipline to adequate and complete the much more intensive approval or tentative approval package endorsement. Note that the imminent action space is 60 days from the goal date. Some tips for success include providing a thorough response on time, alerting the discipline project manager of any issues or delays with your response. You may also contact the regulatory health project manager in the division of project management for any application status questions, including if the imminent action process is being utilized. Hopefully, this presentation helps to explain the changes with assessment goal dates outlined in the GDUFA 3 commitment letter and the various paths to bring a well put together application to approval within the first cycle. For applicants with applications already past the first cycle, there are new processes to bring that application to approval within the current cycle. If you have questions or need to alert the agency of delays responding to an IR or DRL, please contact the appropriate discipline project manager. If you have questions regarding the application status, including imminent action process or other application communications or issues, please contact the regulatory project manager. Thank you for your attention.